Farm organization leaders were briefed in Washington. This was during the weekend following President Carter's announcement of an embargo on American grain shipments to Russia. Devon Woodland, president of the NFO, was at the presidential briefing, and he's with us now. Devon, NFO is supporting our nation's foreign policy, and then saying in the same breath, but keep farm prices up. Is this NFO position still valid following the White House briefing? Well, I'm convinced that we took the right position on the embargo as an organization. We were reassured that farmers would not be expected to carry the economic burden alone. Uh, I'm also convinced that it was vitally important uh, for national security reasons. It became obvious to me in discussions that I had with people who were well informed on international issues that the Soviets were and are headed for the oil fields and that in Afghanistan this would put them in airstrike reaching distance of these fields. This is a superpower now with an expansionist program and they had to be challenged and as their being a superpower it would take a superpower such as the United States to challenge that aggression. I think the mistaken idea in the minds of some people is that freedom is free and it is not and this is one of the prices that we have to pay short of becoming physically involved with uh, personnel and armament. Following President Carter's announcement of an embargo on grain shipments to Russia, the National Farmers Organization called for a two-week moratorium on grain sales to allow the grain markets, which had dropped sharply, to stabilize again. The NFO also called some 175 stop-the-drop meetings all across the country in the heavy grain-producing areas. And Ralph Kittleson, head of the Grain Department of NFO, is beside me now. Ralph, first, what's the purpose of these stop-the-drop meetings? Well, the first purpose, Phil, was to inform farmers of what could be done to try to stop this drop in price because of the embargo. More than that, it's to inform farmers of what they can do to raise farm prices above the disaster levels even at what they were last Friday. That's the main purpose, so that farmers recognize that they must have their own system and can function as a viable group of people under a cost of production plus a profit. Well, Ralph, for an idea on how they're going, this is my cue to call in some reports from around the country. First, we go to Lee, Nebraska, in the Western Corn Belt. NFO board member Ed Tiverdi chaired the meeting at Lee, and we asked him how it went. Real good. We had uh, 56 people, I think, that I registered in at the meeting. Uh, the attitude is just terrific, just great. Uh, meeting lasted about two hours. You could have heard a pin drop through the whole thing. Uh, we sold a lot of the Merchants of Grain books. Uh, we have got a seminar scheduled tomorrow at the same place, and there was people there that weren't going to come that are coming now, and they're finding out just exactly who their enemy is, I guess, and who isn't, and it was uh, one of the best meetings I've ever attended. We talked with David Schweers, a young Iowa farmer. We asked him what could be done, either by the government or by farmers working together. Well, I think uh, there are two things that could be done. One, the government could raise uh, loan rates up to a, a level of, say, 90% uh, of parity. And the other thing is the producers could get together and price their product. And uh, I believe that uh, probably, uh, considering what the Carter administration has said so far, we've got a better chance of producers getting together and pricing their product. Horace Canerva, one of NFO's veteran organizers, has been conducting meetings in the eastern part of the country. Here's his report from Batavia, New York. And it wasn't until after the meeting was over that I found out that all these people who were so attentive, who sat and listened patiently and never once dozed off or, or showed any signs of impatience, were non-members. Only about five, uh, actually there were only five members in a crowd of 65 people. This to me was significant, uh, pointing out that uh, farmers as a whole are feeling the same frustrations and, and uh, need to do something in their own behalf. Leland Townsend reports on the first of several meetings in Michigan. We had a meeting reserved for 56 people and we had 65 show up. They uh, are farming up over a thousand acres apiece, the, the gentlemen we're getting out to these seminars and stop the drop meetings. In zone seven, we had the state director of the ASC was there, and we've signed up 33,000 acres and 
over 55,000 bushels of grain at these Stop the Drop meetings so far. We've enrolled uh, new membership and even some lifetime membership into the organization. Frank Kraft reported on a grain seminar at Colfax, Washington, attended by 160. They represented 82,000 acres of grain. Uh, Kraft also reported that at Haver, Montana, there were 115 wheat ranchers, mostly not members of NFO. And the way Kraft put it, describing these Northwest meetings, they want to do more than just complain about the embargo. Uh, they say that the NFO does have a bargaining plan, and they want to hear about it. Well, grain may have been making the headlines, but all the commodities are important to agricultural collective bargaining. This is why the National Farmers Organization invites packers and dairy processors to NFO national conventions, as well as grain industry people. At Kansas City recently, two executives from leading food industries the NFO helps to supply were among those addressing the convention's delegates. They heard the vice president of Packer Land of Green Bay and the executive vice president of Beatrice Foods. First, here's Gene Statz, vice president of Packerland. Today you have put together a sophisticated working collecting bargaining system we have seen anyone put together in the livestock business. Why has your bargaining concept worked? You have put knowledgeable people at the head of your sales staff that you didn't have there before. People who knew livestock grades, yields, values, and markets. You develop integrity. When you say you're going to deliver 500 head at a price, that's what you deliver. You have people representing you who are smart enough to know what the cattle, the packer wants, how he wants them, and when he wants them, and then negotiate for the top dollar for that supply. In total, you've grown up and are providing a very needed useful service for your membership and to the packer. We congratulate you on this. Livestock is very important to agricultural collective bargaining. Selling together, not going into the marketplace alone, is the name of the game. And we're talking today with one of the specialists who puts together the collective bargaining in livestock for the National Farmers Organization. His name is Glenn Lelf. He's director of the volume division of the meat department. How do you put it together, Glenn? There are three simple steps, Phil. You block, you negotiate, and then you deliver. This word block always, uh, well, it amuses me because it's a technical word in the NFO, and we've just been through the football season. Does it mean the same as they use the word block in football? No, when I think of the word block in football, I mean, I think of stopping all progress. When we assemble a block in NFO, a block of production, as I'm talking about here, we are making progress. Sort of the way a youngster uses the word building block. Right. You're assembling a block and building on that block and adding to that block until you achieve what you want. And the members of the, of the National Farmers Organization contribute to the block. Right. To do this, you assemble many producers' production together to offer to a processor or packer. Now, many joined together can have the impact necessary to achieve our goal of cost of production plus a profit, or to say it another way, to maintain enough cash flow so you can maintain your operation and show a return on your investment. The National Farmers Organization is also enjoying a bigger and brighter reputation among dairy processors. Here's a highlight from the address to NFO dairy delegates at Kansas City by John Connors, Executive Vice President of Beatrice Foods. At whatever level you choose to operate, NFO offers you a chance to pool your resources, to become partners in progress with the major processors. And you got a good reputation. With the, with the major processors, and you have a good reputation with us. By expanding our cooperation, we will expand our horizons where you already supply us or have the potential to supply us. And if you'll commit yourself to supplying the quality and the quantity we need, we'll both secure stable growth in the 80s and beyond, and it'll be profitable for you and Beatrice alike.
From the dairy producing areas of the United States, the top field personnel of the National Farmers Organization, a dairy department, converged on Corning, Iowa. The home office of the NFO had called them in for a briefing session, and the news was good. The volume of milk going through the NFO system is way up, and there's a spirit of optimism. We talked to these dairy people during a break in their proceedings. Uh, Pete Dillenberg, Richland County, Wisconsin. Uh, we have a little change up there, which I think we uh, don't see very many times nowadays. We just opened a uh, new cheese factory right in our area, and the trend has been for the co-ops to buy out the smaller ones, and now we have just opened up a new one in our area. And they're going to be taking about uh, 90,000 pounds a day, so our job right now is to, they're willing to take 100% in a full milk if we can fill their needs. And Joe Parrish from the state of Michigan. How's it doing in Michigan? Very well. We had quite a considerable increase just in the last couple of months. Our volume in December was 11.5% over what it was in November, and we're running 20% above what we were a year ago. The reasons for this, Joe? I think it's trying to do a better job in making our contacts, hitting more producers, spreading the word over a wider area, and getting our membership involved. Uh, Greg Fagan from Amsterdam, New York. Uh, we've gained respect in the marketplace. We're in, we're in markets now that six months ago we couldn't have even thought about selling milk to. They're calling, up, calling us up and asking for it. We are being helped out a little bit by the co-ops, as, as Ted had mentioned earlier today, uh, their assessments, etc., that are hurting the farmer, and this is helping our, us put our point across to the producers. I'm Ellen Baird, and I'm from Jamestown, Pennsylvania. I work out of the Sandy Lake Reload in Sandy Lake, Pennsylvania. We have a lot of farmers that had been with us and quit, and now they're coming back. Is this because the perception of the NFO itself or collective bargaining in dairy is, uh, is well better understood in your estimation? I think part of it is that farmers are realizing that they are going to have to do something, and more and more of them are realizing that cooperatives aren't going to do it for them. I'm Paul Maurer, and I live in Michigan, but working in Indiana and Ohio in the southern part of Michigan. How's it going? Real well. I think we have the best attitude and the best uh, growth that we've had in a long time, and grain, meat, and milk are all coming together to make a, a total program. And this is what we need to do. I think the farmers are beginning to realize they can't take less and make the ends meet with a higher interest in taxes and everything else that's coming along. There's a happy postscript to this month's report. The president of the NFO, Devon Woodland, was interviewed about the restoration of stability to the grain market. Immediately after the embargo to the Soviet Union, I called for a two-week moratorium on all grain sales. Now, the purpose for the moratorium was to give the markets a chance to stabilize and also to give the Department of Agriculture uh, an opportunity to announce their new programs and to act as a relief valve on the grain pipelines. We wanted to avoid any panic selling among grain producers, and this was accomplished. There is still some uneasiness in the grain markets, but they have settled down considerably we are noticing now the major grain companies are back in bidding for supplies of grain. The goal has been accomplished, and we have called for a, an end of that moratorium. And we'll now return to our main objectives of boosting prices of grains and other commodities up to where they should be through that principle of collective bargaining. That was Devon Woodland, president of the National Farmers Organization. Today you heard the county informational tape report for the month of February. This report is compiled and edited by Don Mack, head of the NFO Radio Division. Your reporter is Phil Allen. And that for today is something to think about.